once again y'all you know what i'm gonna end up doing no nah, i ain't gonna do that i am not gonna do that stream yards get on my damn nerves i was getting ready to say i'm changing streaming platforms but fuck all that shit stream yards get your shit together boo happy taco tuesday everybody how are y'all and a b c d f e f g where the hell have you been where in the hell have you been what's going on goal 33 vn training is here hi dominique mitchell how are you who else we got up in this motherfucker because we got to get some stuff right off top right hey jumbo scrimp how are you <laughs> jumbo scrimp you show shade right let's get it ladies i hope everybody's doing well and whatever you're gonna have as far as uh taco like cuisine i hope you enjoyed that it's fulfilling and don't come out too you know weird <laughs> ladies first off do you know what a business is? Do you know that black people own and control nothing? Do you know that? They don't. I don't care how savage, how true, how raw, how respected someone is on this platform, right? At the end of the day, what have I always told y'all? Zaddy wins every single time. Nobody on this platform, including the Manosphere, right? Folks that's making fun, poking fun, all that good shit is exempt. I am not exempt, right? When you don't own and control anything, you have no say. 
it's funny to me the boss bitch shit <laughs> when you own somebody else's shit well if you're at your own business absolutely you are the boss bitch if you own that you control that and nobody can put you off of there but when you're using somebody else's shit it goes day to day that's just how it is ladies white men control everything i don't give a damn about what you talking about when it comes to black businesses buy, support black beauty supply stores and that type of stuff it's cute it's cute but where's the hair coming from i got a question for you at the black beauty supply store that you're supporting where did that Remy, that human hair wig, or whatever you walked your ass in there to get, where did that come from? I'm trying to see something. Black people own and control nothing. Some of your bigger creators don't understand that. Okay. And the thing is, I do. I know that YouTube is temporary. Do y'all know how many people have come and gone off of this platform that were so-called BWE? Oh, the list is long. There were some good ones and not so good ones. There were some ones that, you know, you kind of agree with, but some of the stuff you didn't agree with. There was, it, it runs the, the whole goddamn buffet, but they've come and gone out of here. But you know who doesn't come and go? The Manosphere, right? Black women will get rid of each other quickly, quickly. They have a zero tolerance for each other. And we talked about the black woman hate around this motherfucker. We, we have uh, the hate on hate on each other. It stems from the black male. And when a mammy runs up and y'all know what a mammy is, she comes in several different forms, right? Several different forms. When she sees you saying anything bad about that black man, you could be on some not all shit, like a lot of these whores are. But you can't say nothing. A mammy, the one that hates Zaddy the most, she will be the first one to run to Zaddy on your ass. Pull up. She, the one that tells you how evil those people are, if you say anything about that king that she don't like, she's going to take her funky ph unbalanced ass over to the people that she can't stand you know the ones that own her stores her kids school and that type of stuff she gonna tell him on you right because when it comes down to hating each other there is no limit you hear me there is no limit so those of y'all that are celebrating i guess mm, it can happen to anybody those of y'all that are mad about it you didn't understand what YouTube is, what Instagram is, what Facebook is. Black people don't own none of your favorite platforms. And when they say it's time for you to get the fuck on, guess what, bitch? You getting the fuck on. You can negotiate all the fuck you want to, okay? You're at his mercy. And let me tell you who put y'all in that position. Black men. They built you nothing. Therefore, you have to depend on another group of people for income, no matter what you do for a living. Hmm? No matter what you do for a living, if you chase the money or track the money, it's going to be coming from that white man. OK, I have a ton of respect for white men. If you if you didn't notice, uh, they did some shit that wasn't supposed to be able to be done. Do y'all understand that white people are the minority on the planet? Did you understand that? And they won. Okay. So like the title says, I'm shattering some illusions around this bitch because you think in one way and reality ain't agreeing with you. You wish it. You can hope it. You can self-love special it. You can do positive affirmations and it's not going to change reality unless you move with the fucking flow. You better head start respecting reality or yeah, it's going to be a problem. Does anybody have anything on that before I go? Let's go ahead and call on Snapple and then we're going to make our way around because, yeah, reality is kicking y'all's ass. Happy Tuesday. Hey, um, babe. 
Hey, I just want to start off by saying praise Brad. <laughs> you know, I have a, a, a most respect as well for Zaddy. You know, I don't call them evil albinoids or anything like that. So, you know, it's unfortunate, you know, hope the negotiations work out. But, you know, I mean, all facts. Ladies, you cannot, you cannot win a war when you have to get your pew pew from your enemy. Didn't y'all say they was y'all enemy? I don't feel like uh, Zaddy's the enemy. He's been fucking amazing throughout my 46 years on this planet. Absolutely. He's given me great outcomes around this bitch. But some of y'all view him as the enemy and you have to get your weapon of war from him. Do you understand that's an unwinnable war when you go going to fight and you need him to help you fight him? Are you serious right now? Aaliyah, what you got? I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm going to try to be as nice as I possibly can. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> you laugh because every time I say that, um, I, I, I don't really come off as very nice. But uh, I'm going to let one of the other ladies go because, you know, once I get to going, go ahead. What's, <laughs> what's happening, Mistress Rogue? Have you ever seen somebody uh, get into a fight, right? And they need a bat. So they tap the opponent on the shoulder and say, may I borrow your bat so I can bash your fucking head in? Have you ever seen such a thing? Because that's what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> Good evening, morning. Happy Taco Tuesday. It's a Wednesday for me. But never have I ever seen any dumb shit like that to answer <laughs> your question. I, too, am a lover of Zaddy. Praise Zaddy and all the goodness he has poured into my life. <laughs> <laughs> But here's the thing. You're not negotiating with anybody because you have no negotiating or bargaining power. You have to have something that offers leverage. You don't. Your presence does not offer leverage to this platform or to any platform at large because nobody, you don't own a goddamn thing as you so eloquently express. And I think that's where people get shit wrong. They think that since Black people are allowed to utilize these spaces and apps and all these things, that they somehow own a piece of it. No, if you don't own stock in Facebook or YouTube or anything else, you don't own a goddamn thing. You are there as a spectator who gets to participate. You need to know your place. Look, y'all, it gets even deeper. Do you know if you do have stock in a company and the rest of the board members don't like your funky ass no more, they can buy you out. Yes, they, <laughs> they, can. they can push your ass out. Uh, look, pretty lady, it's been good. Here is what we're offering. Yep. Open that folder. Uh-huh. Look in that folder. I want you to see the dollar amount that you're going to take to get the fuck out of here. Notice I didn't say that was a question. I want you to go ahead and sign that bottom of that paperwork. You can have your time to speak. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, the board has decided that you you're out of here. They will buy you out your own fucking company. It's happening. It happened to the best. They so, call it a hostile takeover. I think it's called. Hey, hey. And ladies. Over here on this platform, nobody is exempt. Not me, not the elephant in the room, not nobody. They're not exempt. And once you start recognizing reality, you'll learn how to move in stealth, right? Prepare for outcomes that are normally the outcome, looking at history and patterns when it comes to, you know, your position in society. You have to be prepared that one day, if you have a YouTube platform that you wake up, open up your laptop and it's not there anymore. You better not be dependent on nobody else's shit to feed you or your family. Pull up, period. Aaliyah is on you before I kind of veer off. I was trying to assess while the other ladies were speaking whether or not I wanted to drag or not. Cause see, I really <laughs> didn't get to talk much last live stream. So I'm on y'all's asses tonight. So grab your popcorn and your bottle of water since now having a glass of wine makes you an alcoholic according to a bitch whose drug of choice just so happens to be food. So Sam Cook, you go grab you a bag of double stuffed Oreos because you're one of the ones who's gonna feel blessed that I was too busy to talk last week and I'm sure it's to your disappointment that I'm back this week it's to a lot of y'all disappointments that I'm back this week in full effect and I'm ready to wreak havoc all over your sloppy ass see you don't like it when we get back with y'all 
But y'all are in for some rude awakenings tonight. But what I would like to know is what negotiations with YouTube are there to be had? They terminated both of the channels. That's like negotiating with the same employer to get your old job back after they already fired you and told you that you were ineligible for rehire. So what is there to discuss? It makes no sense to me. But then again, these people believe absolutely anything that these people say. But I'm going to let it go at that for now. Check it, y'all. Listen, y'all take care of yourself, okay? Everything that we said has come to pass up here. That homelessness is getting outrageous, okay? We even have a homeless woman on this very platform that you, I don't know if you're on your laptop or you on your phone, but on this very platform, it's a joke. We have a homeless woman telling us that we're wrong and extreme. Did you hear what I said? These people are living in a illusion that I don't want to even take a peek into. There is a woman on this platform that's perpetually homeless and perpetually jobless and perpetually broke and perpetually starting GoFundMe's talking shit. Okay, I have to ignore that. I have to, because if I find myself arguing with a homeless woman, it, it's it's going to kind of like bring me down to her level. So I'm going to listen. I wish you a house. Right. Can I say one thing about that? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I wish you were home, ma'am. All I want to say to that person or whoever else has a similar sentiment is we may be what y'all call extreme, but what we are not is homeless. Okay? That's all. <laughs> I'm not unhoused, bitch. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. And y'all are surrounded by a lot of Black women who are mentally unwell. Lord have mercy. She said we was mentally unwell. That's crazy. That's crazy. Did you know that a good chunk of the homeless population actually are mentally ill? Did you know that? So I would stay away from that, madam. Ebony Phoenix, you got anything before I get on these coaches' ass? No, I'm an alcoholic, apparently, because I'm having a glass of wine. But <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, here, here, here's the deal. Um, <laughs> Black people have been able because of the white majority, let's just the or in terms of power, have been able to live in the delusion that they have some power. Mm -hmm. They are a they have been able to live in the delusion that they have power over each other when actually, actually, all they've had is power over black women and children because they basically do what they want them to do. They have no power otherwise. And really even have any power or autonomy over themselves so check these people before you listen to them yeah it's some of your content creators and i shit you not i'm not being hyperbolic when i say this they can't purchase hot food did you hear what i said they cannot purchase hot, hot food because food stamps don't allow you to do so you have to buy something that's cold okay you do with that what the fuck you want to uh, <laughs> autonomy over yourself and you can't even get your fries hot baby Take a look at your screen. Your coaches are fucking you over. Some truths are going to happen tonight. Your life coaches, your dating coaches, they, they're lying to you flat out. That movie right there came out in 1990. It was about a prostitute that came from a bad life and she was selling that ass. And somewhere down the line, she met this businessman who was a multimillionaire. Okay. And he took her for the weekend to go to some business appointments that he had because he didn't want to show up without, you know, a companion. And over that weekend, doing these events, he fell in love with her and took care of her for the rest of her life. <laughs> Did you hear? Listen, and your dating coaches are selling you this story that you in the Disney music. Damn. <laughs> I'm telling you, y'all, you got people telling y'all, listen, ladies, I want you to win. I want you to win. These motherfuckers are playing in your face. They are. Now, is there always an offshoot somehow, some way? Eh, yeah, but it's so rare that it's, it's hardly even worth speaking of, to be honest with you. Okay, so you got dating coaches telling you to, you know, slap on a wig, make sure that you act feminine. You know, you could be an Instagram hottie and all this extra shit. And somehow some millionaire is going to come say, you know what? You it. Listen, those women 
that get to fuck on millionaires, the top notch is side bitch. The top notch is dirty little secret. The top notch is he have you programmed in his phone under the name of Mark, right? That's my homeboy named Mark. Yeah, this pretty woman nonsense that motherfuckers are selling you, do not believe that because I'm going to bring some tea to you real quick and I need you to listen very, very carefully, okay? Can a prostitute marry a millionaire? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She can. She absolutely can. Those circumstances have to be so goddamn unique for that to actually happen or, uh, you know, some sort of hoe or so, some, some sort of sex worker or whatever. Listen, don't bet on that. You might as well play the lottery. It's like you have a greater chance of wearing winning Powerball, right? Than that to actually happen. Because why? What they don't tell you about, I'm going to go over billionaires first, okay? Y'all be looking to have that pretty woman scenario. On top of that being fake, you want it with niggas. <laughs> you didn't, it was already not a thing. It was already a fairy tale. But then you took it a step further and wanted to do it with Tyrone. Are you fucking serious? Are you serious? So you're going to go from delusional to even more delusional, okay? When Tyrone has money, he's probably not going to pick you. Hmm? Black men don't like black women, okay? And there is nobody out here that's a black male millionaire that the thing of his dreams or his fantasy is to take care of some black woman so she can have an easy life. Not happening. I don't care what these women are telling you. Huh? I don't give a shit. And to be honest with you, these bitches that y'all look up to, they don't live that life either. Do you know how many foreclosures, bankruptcies, repos, all that type of shit they go through when they showing you a flex on networks like Zeus, you know, VH1, shit like that. Some of y'all ladies that watch Zeus, one of y'all favorite people, Natalie Nunn, her motherfucking ass was homeless as well. That uh, None of this shit is true, ladies. It's not. And why you would look up to a bunch of women that cut themselves the fuck up because they was already unhappy with themselves, I don't know why. I have no clue. But it's not true. This is what your shit look like in real life. Ha! Yo, this is why I don't do celebrity talk. Because you don't have anything in common with them. They struggling as well, especially, especially if you're looking up to black celebrities. This right here is your situation. This is what you look like, like at in and out Burger, right? After you pay for the food. Because don't think nobody think that this nigga buying nobody no food. You, this is y'all situation right here. With this horrendous looking weirdo on the right, right? Y'all out here... <laughs> At everybody's store, when you're on Instagram, you flexing. But when you get in the store, the nigga standing behind you, putting his Johnson between your booty cheeks to show that he appreciates you paying for shit. Ladies, do y'all not think that we see this shit? Hmm. So all these little skits, all these little flex, all this, all this shit y'all got going on on social media. Social media has done a number to black women. But when you go in the real world, this is what you see. Him putting his ass, his, his dick up to you so that you can feel, you know, wanted and, and needed while you're paying for his games, his tennis shoes, his food. Huh? Yeah, that's that that's what it gives. Mrs. Rowe, what you got on this so far? So far, all I see is a bunch of silly fucking bitches because ain't no fucking way I'm going to be paying for his shit and mine. This is what happens when you don't date actual men. You date children who masquerade as men or children in grown man bodies. And the matter of fact, aren't these the same people that the BC, the black community be holding up as black love goals and shit, mind and she paying all the motherfucking bills. How is that love? When you are loved by someone and you are loved properly, they want to take care of you. It is an honor to take care of you, to know you, to love you. Because if you're living in a stress-free environment, they know they're going to get the best version of you. These people have no clue what love is. Sidebar, DZ, I heard a quote-unquote dating coach today say that as a Black woman, if you wish to date white men, when you sign up for your fake-ass dating profile, just say you're a white woman. What? 
I pro- Snapple, come in and help me out because I told you. <laughs> Wait a minute. So basically, just start the relationship off with lies. Second of all, y'all, those dating apps, y'all better, y'all better moonwalk backwards because there's not a man on earth that's worth dating that's sitting up here writing a resume and putting it online. The bitches in his town are already fucking him. That Pull part, up. that part. But you know, this person was born by the river, so she thought she was giving advice. But that's all I got. Wow. The you, you call us self haters, so you don't want nobody to know you black. What you going to do when you show up when he see you black? Y'all, all of this shit is based on lies. You know, people like what y'all just saw at these stores, they get on Instagram and tell you how wonderful they're living as well. I need y'all to stop comparing y'all lives to these people because their life doesn't exist either. Okay. It's a, it's a online script. That's what it is. They know what to say. They know what to do. They know what to show for you to, you know, throw a heart on it. But that's not what's going on in their lives. Point blank the fuck, period. In real life, right, while y'all out here on these dating streets, y'all bigging up a woman that regularly puts up inmates in front of y'all to see what he prefers. Did you hear what I said? Y'all y'all got these pretty woman Cinderella type misconceptions, right? But then you show up to somebody's shit who's asking an inmate with cinder blocks behind his motherfucking ass what he wants in a man in a woman <laughs> really i need it to make sense you can say what you want to say but i need it to make sense can it make sense at the end of the day oh god what you got mm-hmm. on this sample yes ma'am i, I, yes, I, I felt you. you about to call i felt it in my spirit i just call it <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. I actually have a little bit of a mouthful. Firstly, I want to say to everybody listening, as we all know, social media is not real. Um, Some of you may have heard about um, old girl from Basketball Wives getting sentenced to four years for fraud. Um, There's nothing wrong with having a career, a nine to five, a job, something that you can do to take pride. Now, don't listen to me too much because I don't have a job, but I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all there is nothing wrong, you know, because I sit in Discord all day. I don't have nothing to do. But Listen, please, Snapple, nothing... got, Snapple got a good ass job. Y'all no. don't listen to her. Mm, child, mm. <laughs> I'll be up in there all day. She unemployed. You unemployed. unemployed. But look, there's nothing wrong with, you know, having an honest, making an honest living and supporting yourself. Don't get caught up in these fucking lying ass influencers. These bitches is getting shitted and pissed on and degraded and or they're committing fraud and either one of those things will end up catching up to you and going back to the coaches um yeah there was a femininity coach too um a lot of these um coaches (laughs) life coaches femininity coaches self-love specialists they're very hypocritical they're very hypocritical there's been a lot of hypocrisy going on in these youtube streets lately and um There was one who was admonishing Black women who had commentary and critiques on Cheesecake Isha's outfit. And it's just interesting to me because, you know, so the coaches are, I guess, do as I say and not as I do because they can critique Black women. They could do corrective promotion and nitpick the fuck out of Black women. But don't let nobody else try to offer any criticism or commentary on a trending topic and regarding a black woman and how she's conducting herself. Then you had a self-love specialist having the only meltdown (laughs) that I have ever seen. So it's just a lot, please y'all don't, don't take, don't invest too much in what y'all see on social media, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, It's not real. Like, these bitches are crazy. They're broke. They're unstable. They're unhinged. Just, you know, get yourself an honest living. Get your coin. Watch it to laugh at them. Don't actually. It's it's segueing into what I'm getting ready to tell you now. Check it, y'all. Go ahead, Aaliyah, because we we getting ready to do this. Well, I just wanted to go ahead and co-sign everything Snapple just said. And she said it so eloquently, y'all, didn't she? I mean, said it so nice, so much nicer than I would put it. So just so well-spoken. I like it. Love it. And see, you know, I'm glad we are talking about this, about the skits, about this shit not being real, these fake ass dating gurus, because everybody feel like they can slap whatever title they want on their name now and claim that shit when they don't have degree or training 
or sort of certification that first, part. but everybody think that they are just qualified to try to either, you know, be everybody else therapist and tell everybody else how to think and what to do and how to behave. And it's like, you know, let me just say this because the cheesecake bitch was mentioned several times and I'm going to go back to the beginning on that in a minute. But what I want to do is drop some game right quick for people who think they know everything. And for the women who are supposed to be so high class now and sophisticated that the cheesecake factory is no longer an acceptable first date again sending out fucked up messages because you want to sound more expensive than you really are see that may work on some non-black men but for, for most of them it will not they so see right through your ass if you are expecting men with money to take you out on a first date and spend five hundred dollars on dinners simply because they like looking at you and you're not getting naked at the end of the evening y'all are some of the most delusional bitches on this planet and y'all can get mad at that but i don't give a fuck i never have and i never will and see this is how i know too many of y'all can't be dating grown ass men because they don't throw their money away on shit like that most alpha men who come from money do do not splurge willy nilly on stupid shit. That's how they keep their money. And Please most want to return on their investments. Okay. This is why $5,000 in a black man's hand will not buy him the same kind of bitch that the same $5,000 in a white man's hand will get him, wow. which is a completely different caliber of woman. Understand that. And you may want to write this down because this is free game. Because if, a, if he's a real businessman and he buys you that first $500 steak dinner I can guarantee you that you have raised several red flags to him just that mm -hmm. quickly and it's not just about being money hungry it's also, it also shows that you are number one an impulsive buyer you're wasteful and you have poor money management skills the mere fact that you're willing to spend that much money on just one meal with no clear reason for doing it I'm telling you, if it's not a vacation, a birthday, an anniversary, a networking event, a holiday, or anything, this is how I know too many of y'all can't really be dating non-black men of means for real. Because if you did, you would tell these black women the truth and stop feeding into delusions of grandeur. And that's a lot. You know, most of you black men still don't, you black women, I should say, still don't get about dating alpha men. And that is painfully obvious by some of this horrible ass dating advice that y'all are giving. Y'all keep listening to these failed ass bitches setting y'all up to fail because they are living in an alternate reality where men just buy you expensive things because they like looking at you and because you're pretty and they don't expect things in return. And I guess that makes me misogynistic for saying it, but y'all really need to grow the fuck up because this is not how the real world works and DZ, you know exactly what i'm talking about as someone who takes care of finances and running of the home it's the constant making black women sound immature airheaded and like bimbos for me exactly thank you do you know Amen. what y'all do y'all know what would happen if my husband looked at our bank account and saw me just spending because i i, I was sitting up on some black girl luxury shit you know i'm i'm just gonna keep it real with you he'd say you see, you seem a little overwhelmed. Let me take over that task for you and you relax. That's what he would tell me. This mm. is how people keep their wealth. When y'all see these motherfuckers with these Bentleys, all this goddamn jewelry all over the place, y'all look at your screen. That's <laughs> so many. Hold, hold on one second, Ebony. There's so much money sitting on that couch. Look at the outfits. Huh? Look at those shoes. Look at that raggedy ass sweater Bill Gates is wearing. They don't do that, ladies. And these dating coaches telling you that this that actually happens. No, no. My husband would literally think somebody stole our password and he would be calling a bank saying that some of these charges are fraudulent because we actually live around this bitch. We actually plan for the future. When somebody tossing money up in the air, making money, fans, buying cars and shit they can't afford. Ladies, listen. That's somebody that's going to be brokered in a motherfucker. That's who y'all be seeing on Unsung. That's who y'all be seeing on 30 for 30. That's how all these articles get written about how this person and that person went broke. Hell, y'all just watched Shirley Strawberry get all her shit repoed when she was flexing as well. The bitch is homeless as well. When she's sitting right next to bald head, Naker Harvey. It's fake, ladies. It's fake. Go ahead, Ebony. Okay, I'm really glad. I was going to just say that I'm really happy you brought this picture up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Warren Buffett 
lives in the same house he's lived in for 40 years. Yes. He's one of the wealthiest people on the planet. They okay. do do he, shit, Ebony, because they're trying to right. prove their worth to other people. Exactly. But black people, have, have you noticed the granddaddies, op- <laughs> those dandy da- the dandy daddies over in Africa don't have anything to, in, don't have anything to eat, but wearing these cheap ass suits. Here's the thing, Ebony. They're walking on streets that has human feces Thank on you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Gates. Okay. M- when he picked. Melinda, let me go out. there. Let me go there because we fixing to go there with the billionaires. Oh, okay. Because there's a difference between a billionaire and a millionaire, and exactly. Choosing, so in, in their choosing status, and I'm going to show y'all some tea so you can better yourself. Check so, it. Exactly. A lot of these men of means they meet their women in grad school. Hey, Ebony, I'm getting ready to go there. Okay. I'm getting sorry. ready to go there. All right. Check it. Check it. Check it. Check it. Y'all, because this is tea. Y'all know the motherfucker that owns Snapchat. His that's a billionaire. That's a billionaire. Well, his wife was already a thriving businesswoman. This is what y'all, this is what your dating coach is not telling you. Billionaires like a challenge. You already got a whole bunch of motherfucking money. Let me see if I can make you stay home. Hello? They want to see if you you would stay home and be that taken care of woman. Billionaires marry women that already have. OK, that already showed ambition, that already showed a little bit of smarts, that already was doing the goddamn thing. OK, this woman, his his wife was the first Victoria's Secret model. She used that goddamn money to build her a skincare or organic business. Some of these women, y'all, literally, they, they majored in biometrics, computer science, shit like that. Billionaires aren't looking for fatties, baddies with an Instagram page with a thousand, uh, 10,000 or whatever followers on that shit. They're not. They'll fuck you. Absolutely. And Lord have mercy. Have you ever seen a billionaire with a bitch with a BBL? Have you? I, I think- have not. I have not. <laughs> not at all. I have yeah. not either. No. Hmm. And also DZ. Yes. I also wanted to point out, I'm glad you also, like Ebony said, I'm glad you showed that, mentioned that picture because same thing applies for these coaches and these so-called femininity coaches and whoever the fuck else coach under whatever title coach they think they are. You know, people that are actually living good and living that lifestyle where they're able to find dine and have the best of the best. They're not out here bragging about it. If you have somebody that you're listening to and they're constantly telling you that they're so high end and high class and they experience the best of the best. They have to continuously rub your face in it. They're fucking lying. I'm sorry. That's I another thing. I, I want to hold on a second. Yeah. Let me let me let me address this comment. Truth hurts. And, and y'all do this in the chat a lot. Y'all really do. I, I, I get it. But check it. That was not his first wife. Number one. And number two, his plastic wife was already accomplished and they had already been fucking. Huh? Come on now. I know y'all. Wait a minute. I know y'all looking for the exception to the rule because your dating coaches are saying some shit and you want to believe it's true. Go ahead and believe it's true. And I want you to tell me how that works out for you. I don't give a fuck if it's on my 75th birthday. Go chop yourself up. Right. Chop up your face. Get a BBL. Walk around like you you choosing. And and I want I want to see what you end up getting. Okay. They all, that's what they do with unicorns as well, so-called unicorns, looking for the exception to the rule. And baby, the exception to the rule does not make the generality untrue. Huh? And see, here's the thing. Um, Go ahead, I'm sorry. I wanted to say that true wealth is understated. Okay? Mm -hmm. I dated hedge fund managers. Hedge fund managers. They don't know what stealth wealth is, though. Stealth wealth is not a term that black women are familiar with. They don't they they don't don't wear it on their sleeve or they don't and if they drive it, it's not a big deal. Okay, okay, you guys, you're getting some game tonight. Please listen. That's all I got. I I know uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, there's gonna be a lot of people that they're like it says shattering the illusion. They don't want the illusion shattered. Point blank the fuck, period. They're going to hang on to that 1.8 eighth of a billionth chance that it's going to work for them. And that's what y'all been doing with black men and you failed miserably. You better listen. Those of you that are listen, listening, I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to the ones that still got their fingers crossed and hoping to sprinkle some goddamn where. Uh, sprinkle what? Spr- the, 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 oh, Lord, I almost said something in here. Remind me about that when we get in Discord. 
what Ebony was just saying was the same thing I was about to say because if you look at Sam Walton before he passed people that man used to walk around his stores all the time and people didn't even recognize him because he wore jeans and boots and he drove an old beat up truck he didn't pull up in a Bentley he didn't pull up and he didn't need everybody to see him in all this expensive shit and this man was walking around his own store the whole time he used to do it all the time because he you know he just he didn't have a whole lot to do with, well he had a lot to do but if he wasn't busy he would just go to, just to see how things was going on and he would be walking around his own store dressed like a regular person and they didn't even know that was him the whole time they're not flashy like that and see the thing is when you do all this shit to yourself these men can tell when you're on the prowl you mm -hmm. think these men can't see y'all coming see i see this all day at work when you got these girls coming in to work looking like they're going to the club and all these body dresses wigs pounds of makeup and heels and ain't nothing wrong with looking nice but come on it's 7 30 in the morning and you're up in here <laughs> and you. all this shit you trying to outdress every other woman in the building with all this i woke up like this i woke up like this bullshit <laughs> But if y'all knew what these men were saying about y'all behind y'all backs, girl, the first thing girl. they do is come find somebody like me in a ponytail with my long pants and my basic mm -hmm. running shoes to help him out, talking about they're looking for somebody who looks like they're doing some actual work. Because see, they can already tell you ain't Thank doing no work looking like you. that. And you <laughs> may be looking for a different type of work, but you ain't doing a real work in this <laughs> environment. And I just shake my head because you look cute though, girl. But then if you say some, oh, you just hate. Y'all hate. Aaliyah, can I be really mean? Yeah, go ahead. The white girls do it better. Mm. Whatever yeah. you're trying to do. They've been doing it for years. They've been See, doing they, it they forever. Were, they were not raised to, to ride or die. They weren't exactly. raised to lift men up. They weren't raised. Listen, y'all, you'd catch a billionaire or a millionaire wearing a a very feminine business suit quicker than you would those whole dresses y'all got on period yeah. because you look like you for the streets when you do that and let me tell you something else nobody should see your camel toe except for the the person no, in your bill. i'm serious these bitches walk around with camel toes and shit but you're on to something, DZ, because I'm just like sitting here thinking about when I met my Brad. Y'all, I met him like our first two dates weren't super expensive dates in my mind, but I still, but we had a great time when we first met and I was in his country. He took me to all the museums that he liked and told me about all the things he liked about it. That was our first the date. Trope, they don't like that type of shit. Museums are lame to them. Y'all, you don't know no. how much money hangs out at museums. Museum. Do you understand that shit? The stuff that millionaires and, and billionaires Billionaires do it's usually boring as fuck if it's not on the water, huh? If it's not on the water, it's boring. And but you need to hold on a second, you need to culture yourself a little bit. If y'all out here listening to dating coaches, y'all need to demand that the results work. I don't do dating coach, I, I, I don't do that shit. I do your safety. But the thing is, a lot of dating coaches and life coaches and shit be throwing shade over here, and I'm I'm just gonna give you something to tell them that's real. Huh? The fuck you mean? Yeah. And then like our second date, y'all, like we went to the Christmas market and had his favorite glue gun. And I was like, and I remember thinking like, I could marry this man because it was the little things, how he listened to me. He would hold my hand. If he felt like somebody was a threat, he stepped in between me and the threat. Like I just knew I was going to love that man forever. And I honestly, I didn't even know anything about what his family did or who they uh -oh, were. Uh oh, she finna tell y'all her whole dating history. Let me go yeah. ahead and jump in this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Listen, Mrs. Rogue loves her fiance and he treats her very fucking well. When we're in Discord, he come give her the eye and then she scatters the fuck off and say good night, lady. Because <laughs> he 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 be checking on this girl, okay? And a lot of y'all don't know what that feels like. Okay, sometimes Ooh. when I get a little amped up here, my husband will text me and say, are you okay? Making sure I'm not really up here mad as fuck. Let me tell y'all real quick about this Mark Zuckerberg situation because this is the tea they won't tell you. Y'all talk about how ugly and all the shit his wife is. Usually millionaires' wives, they, they not <laughs> consider baddies, okay? I'll just put that out there. But check it. He met her at Harvard. Met her at Harvard. They started dating. He did not ask her to marry him until she became a doctor okay they dated for years it didn't become official until she became a pediatrician then he retired her motherfucking ass 
You hear me? This is how real life works. Nobody strolling looking for prostitutes that are calling themselves uh, bag getters and sprinkles and all this extra shit. It's not real life unless you want to be fucked and set to the side. If that's what you're looking for, keep it up. And let me say this too, because I know there's some bitches out there that can't wait to take this commentary and try to run off with it. See, I see they're trying to tell you what you don't deserve. Okay. They're trying to tell you to lower your standards. Nobody they're said y'all didn't deserve it. Nobody said no, y'all didn't deserve it. Nobody said any of that. Nobody told you you had to sell McDonald's. Nobody told you had to sell Burger King. Nobody told you you had to let nobody play in your face. But here's the thing: a lot of you bitches do not live in reality. That's and that's a fact. And we knew, but I'm gonna get back on that cheesecake factory bitch in a minute. But I just wanted to go ahead and point that out because I know you got quite a few slides you want to go through, DZ. And this is a topic, it's a lot to unpack with this. It is. So y'all interrupt me whenever y'all want to. It, and it's not it's not a bunch of slides, but this shit needs to be put out here. Because well, can I say would, one thing? Hold on one second, <laughs> Ebony. Look, y'all are are saying you got the champagne taste. But then it's thousands of y'all in that chat trying to see what an inmate prefers in a woman. It's not making any sense, okay? And some of y'all have taken the route to picking up dust off the ground and trying to turn it into some something. Sometimes it works, sometimes it fails. But listen, when it does work, he replaces you with somebody a little bit lighter than you. Huh? Go ahead, Ebony. You know, it just seems like from the way you ladies are described, describing some folks in these audience, you know, it sounds like a lot of pennies looking for a Benjamin. It doesn't work that way. Life doesn't work that way. And I hate to say it, but some of you, even if it did happen to you, you wouldn't recognize it. It's like you're used to the struggle. You, yeah, you, you, they want that black and standing shit in, right. in, in white version, and that's not going to happen either, ladies. Exactly. And the thing is, you can't run around and say, oh, ladies, you're worth this now, till you know what your true worth is. I don't even have to explain this Selma Hayek situation, all right? Old boy from Gucci. It, she, Selma Hayek was already an accomplice actress and had her own money, so I will go ahead and skip this shit here because, darling, she done hit the goddamn jackpot. Okay. Yes, Late. she did, but to, to me, she's the most one of the most beautiful women in the world too. That I don't know. That she kind of she she kind of looked like a pancake to me without the syrup. <laughs> uh oh, y'all. Ebony says she one of the most beautiful women in the world. That color is Ebony. Why is she so beautiful to you? What you think she's, she's so beautiful? Pretty. For? I like her face. You like her hair. You like, like her, her face. Hair, her hair in four C. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Look. they're gonna say. Y'all, this is also self-explanatory. Old boy from Google. Well, his wife has a PhD in biometrics informatics, huh? Biomedical, excuse my uh slip, informatics. So if you're looking and choosing, you have to go ahead and put yourself first. What divestment has always been about. Make yourself a bad bitch for real. Not somebody that's sitting up here just proclaiming that they're a bad bitch. I see the bad bitch this month. OK, she uh, she she had a very high self-esteem, got that BBL and got up on TikTok and she was talking about how amazing she is and bitches are jealous. Uh, she took herself out. Did you hear what I said? I know a lot of that, you know, false confidence that y'all be doing on these Internet streets. It's fake. It's fake as fuck. Nothing that yeah, she had her the, the unicorn dusty, according to her. Right. She was popular on these Internet streets. OK, she had the body. Right. Her face was very, very pretty. OK, she's no longer here because that was something that's very, very sensitive. I'll go over that behind the wall. If y'all know who I'm talking about, you can, you know, put her name in the chat. But R.I.P. to her. I know false confidence when I see it. I know somebody that's been listening to somebody that tell you to stand in a mirror and do positive affirmations without actually getting to work on bettering yourself and making y'all all of these billionaires wives. They could make it on their own. He could get the fuck up and leave at any time. That's what I'm saying. Bitches run around here talking about how they get, you know, they popping tags and shit. And the majority of y'all can't even tell me who that is. Who that? Chat time. Who that? I'm trying to see. Okay. Y'all call his name all the time. Stay calling his name. Flexing. Right. <laughs> That's Louis Vuitton. You see what the fuck I'm saying to you? 
Y'all dealing with a group of ignorant bitches. Okay? That's Louis Vuitton. Hmm? And see, this is what I, the fuck I'm talking about. But let me tell y'all something. Because it, this shit been going around for a few days on YouTube now. And I see a lot of people are walking back their commentary that they said about this shit originally, that Cheesecake Factory shit. I still stand by everything I said in our previous video because riddle me this. If her message, and I'm talking about the bitch in the skit, if her message was really for the luxury level up and hypergamy community, that doesn't have shit to do with us, okay? We are divestment. Those are different sectors. That's why we recognize the behavior and who she was mocking. Secondly, if that was her really her intention, they could have chosen a black man to do that same skit. So why didn't they choose a black man? Oh no, they purposely chose a non-black man so that it could turn other black non-black men off from trying to date us. I said that then and I'm saying it now. See, you can hate the player, but you can't hate the game. And when you know the game, you don't let people play in your face. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see what the agenda is here. And unfortunately, black women have been leading the charge in this. And this is why these bitches aren't to be trusted. And that includes all your celebrity black women which we drag them to. Their status doesn't mean shit over here. Everybody got it, including Mammy Tiffany Haddish and Tina Knowles. And that's why the cheesecake bitch got her ass dragged because we've seen this more often than not where black women's standards for non-black men are out of control compared to when they're dealing with the black man. So please review our last video and apply those comments to this as well. Because when you try to dip your toe off into our lane, knowing that we're trying to get black women to a place where they're not so hung up on black men and you got bitches like this intentionally trying to sabotage that message she can get this work because if she if she had a point to prove about black women to black men then use a black man don't try to be subversive and undermine black women who date out by using a non-black actor and play in our faces or i can get a hell of a lot nastier than i did the first time oh yes because the goal remains the same, which is to make black women look shallow, materialistic, selfish, and greedy, and ultimately undateable. And just who do y'all think they were sending that message to? Hell, black men already don't date the bulk of y'all already if we're keeping it 100. So her message was not for black women at all. It was to make us look undesirable to non-black men, which is always a mammy's ultimate goal. And I'm tired of these people playing in our real lives because a lot of us, don't date black men. We date other groups of men. And this is not for play. This is what you have women actually married to these men and currently dating these men. It's not cute and it's not funny. And lastly, the last thing we need is a bitch who's been dating out for all of five minutes trying to lecture the women who have been dating out for decades. Me personally have been almost 15 years in the game. You can't do that. Hell, you were just promoting the idea of polyamory to black women not that long ago. So the mere idea that you can now try to check black women on something is laughable. And I find it funny and most fascinating that the ones who are the most pro-black now want to have all the expertise on all things interracial. That's fucking laughable to me. That part. Ladies, it is what it is. Okay? Yeah, go back and check those goddamn uh, live streams. Speaking of skit, the people that's reporting it's a skit, they're a skit. Their life is in a fucking mess, okay? The skit is this. Um, put yourself first. Black women and girls. Dark skin deserves better. So on and so forth. I'm here to make sure that things are corrective and this, that, and this. Oh, don't forget. Cash Apple, right? Uh, listen, that whole, the, the black women are a fucking skit at this point. And uh, I smell something coming down the pipe. Anytime something goes viral, but it didn't go your way, everything's going to be a skit. Everything's going to be a skit. But if it stick, if that shit work, then you would have never fucking found out. Pull up. Absolutely. And see, in fact, the only thing I would like to add to my commentary that I didn't the first time is that, bitch, you are a horrible actress and don't quit your day job. She got the same thing that every other failed or pseudo celebrity or influencer gets when they get on here with that bullshit. I really don't care how we got there. You will not try to besmirch the character of black women who choose to date out with your community's bullshit, especially when the majority of black women only date black men. That's what really 
really irritates my fucking nerves even more. If she's an actress, then clearly she wasn't even really into dating out. So trying to embarrass black women in front of other groups of men to try to prove, prove a point will only get you another verbal ass whooping over here. Keep your Blackistan bullshit over in Blackistan. Nobody has all these juvenile ass conversations surrounding dating outside of black women and black people in general. Every time I've ever been asked out by somebody that I wanted to go out with, it was not with these people in mind. They were the furthest thing from my mind. But with the inception of all this social media bullshit, we got all these class clowns dunces and empty wagons making the most noise and i'm not a fan of any of it and you got all these morons and these lunatics running the fucking asylum around here and somebody needs to be the adult to tell y'all to sit the fuck down at the end of the day word on the curb is that whole goddamn situation was put together by one of your tyrones okay and to, anyway can I, i'm sorry can i comment on cheesecake keisha before we move on uh-huh because i didn't get a chance to comment the first time um but now that we know it's a skit like i think she really should be dragged by her connecticut braids you know um you know i know that like i mean let, 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 let's talk about some like corrective promotion <laughs> since you know i mean look she she was on some fuck shit and I feel like everybody kind of went easy on the hoe. But now that we know you, this Amazon ass, six foot five ass bitch was playing. That's games. a big bitch. That's you a mean? big ass bitch. Okay, that's all. That's a big bitch. I'm like, like I'm God, damn. Damn. when she stood up, I didn't think the bitch was gonna ever finish standing up. It's, it was like she was growing. <laughs> Yeah, this big ass Amazon ass bitch. Like now, I look at that little raggedy ass rainbow shops, lime green spaghetti strap dress that she had on even differently. Like, girl, uh uh, bitch, you need to shop in the big and tall section, ho. If you're gonna be doing some skits, you need to come correct, okay? That that was very much piss poor. That presentation, I don't give a fuck what a shadow fro ass bitch got to say. Check okay? it, y'all check y'all check out our. Y'all check out our live um, where we talked about that shit. One of the first things Love. we said was, please come out and say this ain't true. But we're going to yes. pretend like it's true right now and drag this bitch. But That's what like, actually it, happened. People on their high horses, though, for me. It's like motherfuckers be on their platforms. They're very large platforms critiquing black women, doing corrective promotion, pointing out this, this could be better. That's not appropriate for this setting, blah, 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 blah. But bitches want to come out and try to be contrarian for no fucking reason, just to try to sound like they're different and they have a different take. No, bitch, you're a fucking hypocrite. That's what the fuck you are because you know goddamn well you and your motherfucking corrective promotion would not have approved or maybe you would have, because you might be a sloppy ass bitch in real life. But anyway, um, I just wanted to add that that bitch needs to get dragged. The fact that it was a see before it was confirmed that it was a skit, it was just like okay, let's give our commentary. But now it's like, bitch, fuck you! Like you out here trying to make black women look bad, women that are black women that are trying to date out. You trying to intentionally make it. You trying to paint a picture like we're just unreasonable and shit. So, Whoa. bitch, fuck you. Check it, y'all. Now we getting into millionaires. Yeah, we keep venturing off into drag, ladies. Check it. <laughs> yeah, mil millionaires are, are closer to what what you well, what you're doing that that you can get. But here's the thing. Check it. Millionaires have this thing where they like to retire professional women. A lot of millionaire men are married to former doctors, nurses, teachers, accountants, huh? Lawyers. All right? Nobody is checking for a bum bitch. Yes, you can become a housewife. You can go, go ahead and get all your needs and wants taken care of both financially, emotionally, mentally, whatever. But you're not going to have the pretty woman experience, okay? Usually, coming from, from speaking firsthand, when you got a man that has a, a, a couple dollars, right? Usually, you're tasked with the household floating, right? You're, you're with the, you check the the email, you check what's coming in physical mail to see what notices or whatever has to be done. You make your doctor's appointments and that type of stuff, okay? I, I make my husband's doctor's appointments all the time. Doctors make the worst fucking patients pull up and so do nurses. So you have to make them go. 
But that's what you're going to be doing. And nobody wants a bobble-headed, air-headed weirdo sitting up there. I don't know how to, what is the number? <laughs> nobody wants to, nobody wants to hear that shit. Okay. That's that that gives prostitute, escort, sex worker, one night stand type shit. Okay. And a lot of these women ain't no lookers. Since you know, we need to do some facial recognition around this bitch. Yeah, that's <laughs> y'all. I can't. Does that look like a millionaire's wife? Does it? Okay. That's the James Bond, the sexy man. He been sexy for years. Bond ain't married to no Bond girl. Huh? James Bond is always around sexy women. But check out James Bond's wife. Would you take a look? James Bond's wife, huh? Right? She is a film production like manager. She also does public speaking. She also um, had a show that she was on where she was a commentator on some shit. He didn't pick her up off a of fucking what looks like a prostitute troll or an Instagram page and none of that shit. She's what a lot of people would call obese. But her husband's a millionaire. Get this game. They do not sit up and look for motherfuckers that's bobbleheaded and got lashes all the way down their goddamn arm. Huh? Let's keep going. He's been married for this, to this woman for years. Look at that body. <laughs> as, as, as my husband would call it, she got a lot of bodice. That's what he be saying. <laughs> anyway, real, go ahead. Real quick, most of these men of means, they have to take you to like dinner and stuff to meet maybe some of the people they work with. You can't be out here just, oh, I'm so dainty. I don't know what I'm doing. No, you have to be able to actually hold a conversation with these people. And I'm talking, and when you're in certain places, they're not talking about, oh, what was going on with with such and such a this celebrity's business. No, they're talking about stocks and bonds and business projections. They're talking about art and history. You have to be, you can't be fucking stupid. That's not real life. Well, from what I heard, all you have to do is wear pink, smile, and know what a fucking shrimp fork is. <laughs> That's what I heard. Uh, now, let me, uh, let, let me, let me get, let me get all this bodice. <laughs> Shout out to you, baby. <laughs> Shout out I'm to gonna, you. I'm going to use that. <laughs> he say it all the time when he say see women like that. She got a lot of bodice. But and check it. Go ahead. I was saying it's weird because we've been saying from the very beginning that these men choose average looking women to be with. And now all of a sudden you got bitches coming behind us trying to steal that shit and pretend like that, that's been the rhetoric the whole time. No, it hasn't. Y'all have promoted on these femininity channels exactly the opposite. You had to be super skinny. You, I'm not promoting obesity on over here on my channel. You had to look a certain way. You had to do this. You had to do that. And we said from the very beginning, it don't require all that. These men have average, well-educated, highly accomplished wives. But that wasn't the rhetoric that was going around with on these hypergamy cha femininity channels. So we're not going to sit here and play that fucking game. That's more stolen commentary and more shit that y'all stole more recently from behind the wall. We had this conversation about these men going for average women that don't have to be super thin and all this other shit. Don't get me wrong. Dogs love bitches. But real men that got real fucking money. They're not finna pick no any goddamn body. They don't want a moron birthing and raising and educating their children. They don't want a moron sitting up playing dumb. Like I said, it's this, this whole airhead shit sitting around. They're gonna wonder if you belong in a straitjacket if you start acting the way that they're suggesting that you act on some of these dates. You will not be asked out again. I promise you. That part. Y'all, and we're not saying that there's some, you know, widowers right there's some widowers out here who lost the love of their life and they get a goofy bitch to you know spend time with absolutely but to be taken seriously and have legacy no nah, they're not going ladies <laughs> y'all already know this motherfucker here favors my husband a lot check it now here's the deal look at this woman look at this woman now some of your dating coaches would tell her she needs to do her hair she needs to you know Look at some makeup tutorials or hire somebody to do makeup. Ladies, look at her. She looked like she just came out of some classroom with a bunch of preschoolers trying to teach them and calm them the fuck down. Okay? This is what millionaires go for, ladies. They, they Because life is real. It ain't always playtime around this bitch. Okay? 
who else we got on here? I forgot who the hell we I put on here. Oh, this is them more more recently. She looked like she's cockeyed. She, it looks like she then took too much of the you know whatever she got prescribed around this bitch. So you don't have to be that 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 hood rat uniform that plastic bullshit in order to you know get what you get. And Actually, ladies, those, those of y'all that are having a happily single life, do that because they it, a man don't validate you. Actually, what Ebony? Actually, um, it seems to me that they're teaching these women to cater to black men where you actually have to look a certain way. Yes. You have to have certain skin. You have to have certain hair or a wig. You have to have that. And even after all of that, it's never enough to make them a man. Mm -hmm. See, everything about them is about them grooming and trying to make women and shape black women into everything that the black man wants. That's what all that shit is about. They try to pretend like they're trying to help you. And they're, no, they're not. They're trying. They're, that's gaslighting. They're trying to tell you how to be feminine, too. That's the difference between them and us. They want to tell you how to be feminine to catch a black man, the least accomplished man, the least employed, the one who have the very least to offer see we're not gonna tell you no bullshit like that we're telling you that you know trust and believe nothing we're saying is to groom y'all for a black man so do not ever get that shit fucking twisted okay but if you want to date out of this community it's certain things that you're gonna have to do certain shit you're gonna have to clean up and certain shit you're gonna have to conform to and that's just a fact i don't give a fuck fuck that shit i'm gonna be me regardless because i'm so motherfucking real and i always keep it a book that's why i say people got it twisted it's some highly accomplished women up on this platform i don't give a fuck we can play around we can talk our shit we can goof around but at the end of the day bz know when her husband got colleagues coming over she leaves Leave her DZ persona exactly where it is. We all know how to cold switch and turn that shit off despite what y'all bitches think. That's why you can go suck a fat dick. Okay? <laughs> Please. And you know thank what? you. You know what, though, DZ? And I, I love that you said that, Aaliyah, because it makes me think about George and Melanie Lucas. Y'all know Melanie Lucas is like with the CEO or the COO active of like NBC or some mess mm -hmm. like that. And George Lucas owns like the whole goddamn Star Wars franchise prior to selling it to Disney. He a whole billionaire and she a whole millionaire in her own right. And I remember her saying something about him wanting to retire her, but her telling like her, them having a talk about how she feels like she can be her best self and more fulfilled as a wife when she works and he said he let it go because that made her happy the uh, like the real men understand what it takes to support you a real woman because they understand that in you they can have a great legacy you have great attributes to pass on what do niggas have to pass on i'm still waiting for like the punch syphilis, syphilis. <laughs> yes. syphilis. you mean to tell me she wanted um she wasn't out there in her sexy red wig or her orange or neon green. She went out there in her, her blonde wig, wig, her 30 inch weave down her ankles. She went in all that she shit. A, she was a she had a pixie cut. He said he canceled a business meeting. He wanted to date her so bad because they had a great conversation over. They were talking about Shakespeare or something. And I'm like. See, this is that that's reality, black women. If you want to date out, don't take that ghetto thought shit with you. You're going to have to code switch and do it properly. You don't need to go in somewhere with green motherfucking hair, tattoos on your motherfucking face and neck, looking like you got fucking smallpox or something. You have to tone it down. White men are not abrasive in their approach. They're gonna be soft and everything. And when they come to you, you can't be all hard and fucking jagged. It just doesn't work that way. These women give these white men a very hard fuck in time they always on some you know uh, what the what, what, i mean he i don't know what he was talking to me for and as far as tattoos go ladies tattoos are okay not on your face not on your forearm not on your hand not not whenever you get dressed formally nobody should see the tattoo so get them in places where only he can see them not the colleagues okay that's just a piece of tea now we talked about the billionaires then we talked about the millionaires um ladies this is the deal this is what day-to-day -day interracial dating looks like. This up here, yeah, that's beautiful. That's gorgeous. That's a nice picture. That's, in reality, vacation time, right? Birthdays, holidays, that type of shit. But what these dating coaches are telling you is that you're supposed to do this every day. Well, when does he go make the money if he on the beach with you eating, drinking champagne and shit by the water? 
He got to go make some goddamn money. That's a beautiful picture. But this is what reality is. Nice house, safe neighborhood, right? He's there. She's happy. That's reality. That's reality, ladies. I don't know why these bitches selling you these pipe dreams. Sprinkle on that shit. That's at the end of the night. That's reality. That's beautiful right there. Okay. They're so <laughs> cute together. I love it. All right. That's I want y'all to get out of this delusion shit because what you're doing, you're cosplaying on the internet. Okay. And if for some reason your Wi-Fi go out, that reality going to set in. Assess what your reality is. Move strategic, strategically. Move accordingly. Get yourself together. Right. Know what's pretty on you. Right. Know, know your, your body type because all, you know, all of you, no matter what you shape like, if you know what you're supposed to be wearing, you're going to be gorgeous. Okay. Stop putting birthday cake on your fucking face. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's it's like the first time we when we talked about the went did the other video. We said straight up, it's this this shit for me that again these people are playing around with women who actually date out. Stop it with this bullshit. You have fucked up the dating pool over there for the in the black community with all that bullshit. Stop trying to bring that shit out of the community and take it to other communities with this bullshit to try to fuck it up for other black women who don't date black men. And that's that's what I'm getting from a lot of this shit that's going on. Even that shit, LaCroche on Rock over there pulling. It's this whole, I don't know why we got this whole effort to try to keep black women in the same fucking space, doing the same fucking thing, while all y'all running around just being promoting whole shit and being thoughts, and everybody just so happy and so proud, and you got people raw dogging and fucking raw all on the internet. Not everybody heavily walking around heavily pregnant and all kind of. But this is—is is this what y'all really proud of? Is this really what y'all want us to be? This the image y'all want to keep putting out there. Everybody, somebody, but let me guess. I'm I'm shaming. I'm judging, and everything else. That's why I say a lot of y'all bitches got a lot of growing up to do. You oh, really yeah. do. I have an mm -hmm. answer for you on that. Um, they want to keep black women in that piss poor community because black women are the only security black men have. Let's be real here. Black women marching and protesting and pushing for legislation and being at the forefront and spearheading the civil rights movement and spearheading uh, it, reconstruction post-emancipation and spearheading through Jim Crow and getting the Missouri Compromise struck down. It was black women's effort doing that in protection of black men. If you go, they lose a measure of protection. If there's no measure of protection, there's nobody there to fight for them to push legislation so they will actually get punished for the bullshit that they do. You're just there as a security guard when it's convenient. And when you're not a security guard, you're there as fodder, cannon fodder. You're gonna have to pick your fucking struggle, ladies. Can I ask y'all something? While y'all playing on the uh, the white man's internet, <clears throat> white men can't take y'all to Cheesecake Factory. That That's clear. It, well, a lot of women were saying, they, cosplaying, Pretending like they some, you know, badass bitch around this bitch, whatever, whatever. But you letting black men take y'all to Denny's and then you posting it. Denny's for the first date. Let's go, y'all. Please tell me you are f***ing playing with me right now. I know you can't be serious. What, what, what do you mean you can't take the tag? What, what, what are you saying? I left my debit card at what home. You, okay, you got Venmo, PayPal, Cash no, App? I don't, I don't use none of that. I'm sorry. What you... <laughs> you... I got you fried. I got. I'll, I, I'll pay you back Friday when I get paid. You can pay you back right now. What do you mean? I don't. I, I, I just don't have no I'm cash. Y'all got going on. Y'all going to see. You know what? Hold up, hold up, hold up. This, you know what? <sighs> yeah, that part. Uh, ladies, people know y'all playing on this internet. Okay. And it, it's fun to see. It's entertaining to see. But that's y'all's real life. Denny's was okay, right? Y'all eating at Denny's that, that got them hard ass eggs full up. I can't stand they fucking eggs. But yeah, nobody believes you. Okay. Y'all talk about y'all being discerning and all that shit there. Y'all, y'all are not the only people that are discerning. A lot of people see straight through your shit. They ignore y'all's rhetoric so much that they don't even come to your comment sections rebuking shit y'all claiming that you are. Because they know y'all over here playing, you know, in costumes and shit. Going up to it, 
let me show y'all something else before I scroll down and get to what y'all really dealing with. Okay. You, you up in the Walmart, of course, Walmart and the card when he don't forget it is getting declined. Let's go. He want food. He want food. Don't want to buy a rope. Don't open your big ass. No, I don't open your big ass. I already ate. Don't bear me for me, people. I already ate. She toxic, so she do this all the time. I already ate. You do this all the time. Don't you don't try to bear me for me. I'm not ready to bear. You ain't got the rope wrapped. You the one. You want to stupid here. Your big ass look stupid. You look you stupid. Take them get up. Oh, he got the rope. Six pieces of chicken. You paid for that. You had to pay. Oh my God. <laughs> Don't take him to jail because he likes the food in here. That's how you got that pig. Who gonna pay for this stuff? Roll the car. Your car always the time, bitch. Back. She said, "Who gonna pay for this stuff? You. You are gonna pay for it, y'all. All of these women that y'all see up here, right?" They have Instagram accounts. If you go to their Instagram, you'll see the flexing. Your debit card got declined at Walmart, one of the cheapest stores on the planet. Okay. The, the, stop playing in folks' faces. For some reason, we're expected to believe that everybody got it so fucking good and Cheesecake Factory is too good, too bad for them or too low class or whatever. But uh, in real life, when you cut your, your device off, I'm seeing your cards getting declined. I'm seeing you telling this nigga that you're not going to give him a ride home. I don't know why the fuck you picked him up. He said he don't have his card on him. Then he said they play in your face because then he said he'll get her on Friday. Well, which one is it, nigga? Did you forget your card or do you not have any money and don't get paid till Friday? And y'all let these people play in your face. I guarantee you if you go to either one of those women's account, you're going to see a bunch of I got it good over here. Can mm -hmm. we come back? Yes, ma'am. Uh, real quick, did you notice how quickly he went into disparaging her, calling her a big bitch and out of her fucking name as uh -huh. soon as his manhood was challenged? So, like, he didn't even give a fuck that that cop or security guard was there. He basically got in her face and basically projected the blame for the fact that he's a broke ass nigga on her. And she went back and forth with it. You got to be out of your fucking mind. How the fuck is your car getting declined at Walmart? That's the equivalent of going to the goddamn. Um, drink machine and putting in a quarter and find out it's a fucking peso and, and then guess, kick it back out. That's stupid. And guess what? She probably is, is was that supposed to be her man paying for the groceries and he couldn't foot the bill. And I guarantee you even after all that shit he called her after they left the store and she took that nigga home and fed him yep. and fucked him. Even That's after stupid. all of that. Did y'all hear what she learned. said? When that um, police officer or security guard or whatever the fuck he was was walking up to him she said don't arrest him. I don't know if y'all caught that part, but that's what the fuck she said. All right. And um, you know that's that. that's the sad shit there. Yeah, yeah, and before we move on, um, that's black love. That's what the fuck it is. That's 90%. <laughs> that's 90% of black love. All your favorite influencers, all your favorite black love couples. Um, the woman is the one foot in the bill most of the time. These motherfuckers are making less than them or nothing at all. And these bitches are out here flexing and, and lying and pretending trying to make it seem like they have a provider and that motherfucker ain't worth a damn. And this, that little Walmart clip is a representation of black nerve. And don't y'all motherfucking forget it. These bitches be lying. They be buying themselves roses, taking pictures of the roses and posting them on Instagram as if they're dusty got it for them. These bitches are mentally ill. They are. They are. And you basing your life off of some shit they got going on. Reality is on your screen. We talked about the billionaires. We talked about the millionaires. If y'all on these dating apps, you're looking at what you're getting right there. Okay. And that chart is only the black men that actually have a job, a decent job at that. That's reality. So you can go in these comment sections or whatever. And this came from the social security website. Okay. This is from 2021 The 2022, 23 haven't come out yet, but it's on its way. Okay. You're looking at a group of men that you sitting up here playing with them. Right. And you're talking about providing. Let me tell you something on the white man side. <laughs> look, that's what they're making. These the undereducated. Right. The ones that have all these uh, white powdered donut dusty um, dreams. OK, 
let me keep it real with y'all in this economy your man ain't making nothing if he don't make over $150,000. Did you hear what I said? You're going to be, you know, watching the uh, the money in this economy because shit is expensive now. But I want to shatter some more shit. Look at the black, look at the white, and go all the way down to the bottom. Okay? For some reason, at the age of 40 through 49, when they get to the next age group, the money drops a little bit. Remember the women that's putting y'all out here talking about sugar daddy? Well, sugar daddy in that last group. Y'all ain't got no damn sugar daddy. You got somebody that's getting you a checker burger, fucking the crap out of you, and then saying, I'll talk to you tomorrow. When he's splurging, he gonna pay that cell phone bill. Who, who y'all think y'all, are y'all okay? Who do y'all think y'all talking to? The numbers are out there, okay? This is the common man right here. The ones that's in these chat rooms, the ones that's on Clubhouse, the ones that's sitting up here in these comment sections, the ones you see in that, that, that little, y'all better stay out in these clubs, okay? These little hip hop clubs and shit like that. That's best case scenario for black men because the majority of them don't work. It's um they like the most unemployed. They cost the co economy $50 billion a year. But when this type of stats and these type of numbers are available and you still playing in people's faces, you have lost your fucking mind. You've lost your mind. These are the type of men that make dating profiles. Somebody that's making $150,000 don't make dating profiles. <laughs> he, he, he gets his. Okay. So if y'all still on here on this KG, let me look at the, the, the hookup shit. This is what y'all's getting. Okay. This is it y'all. I want you to know that your Google works. It works. So when people telling you all these lies, if this man is not some sort of physician, if he's not some sort of, I'm not talking about the t-shirt man, entrepreneur. I'm not talking about ones that put RIP baby girl on t-shirts. I'm talking about a real businessman. If he's not making that type of money, it's sort of a struggle. And guess what? You're going to have to work. In order to live comfortably dealing with that set of men, you're going to have to work. So get yourself ready, at least a part-time job. OK, and y'all, the only way you won't be able to work is if you downsize and get, you know, everything is minimalist. OK, so can we can we come back to reality? Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I just had one more thing before we get off here tonight that I want to talk about, because I've seen a lot of shit the last couple of days. And to be honest with you, a lot of these bitches have been showing their asses. And with this shit that I've been seeing all over different social media platforms, talking shit. And when they want talking shit about this situation that we've been discussing tonight, they're talking shit about us. And see, this is, and to y'all raggedy bitches out here running y'all mouths while trying to check somebody using my stilo. Yeah, I see you. I see you. I, I saw you and I heard you. And I really need y'all hoes to get more creative. So let's get a few things straight here tonight. We're not here to inspire anything productive out of your community. Y'all have had generations to do that. So I'm not understanding what's not landing for you. You're cooked. You're done. You've been done. You were done long before now, whether you choose to believe that or not. And all of you who have these huge platforms who love bragging about how you've been here since God said, let there be lights contributed to its demise by being equally as messy, spilling tea, stirring pots, airing each other's dirty laundry, supporting ratchetry, all this dysfunction and whole shit while claiming to be black media or the voices for the black culture. Y'all all sat idly by and either watched the mess, reported on the mess, or participated in the mess. And y'all condemned anybody who tried to speak out against it. Y'all made it impossible for other black women to be honest about anything because you bitches were these niggas' personal henchmen. And you went after anyone who tried to tell the truth. It was y'all doxing people. It was y'all calling people's jobs and getting people fired. It was y'all harassing people's neighbors and trying to get people evicted. It was y'all harassing people's family members via social media. A lot of y'all did not rest until you ruined other black women's lives because you would rather see another black woman go hungry and lose everything rather than to offend your precious king's delicate sensibilities. So y'all bitches can stop trying to get all self-righteous now. Y'all profited from this community's destruction as well. And now you think you can blame DZ's panel for everything because I am no longer saying divestors as a whole anymore 
when you talk about divestors, you really mean us. You think you can blame us for a gender war that has been going on for generations and it's not going to happen and I am not going to allow it. Y'all didn't say shit as long as the manosphere was dragging the fuck out of black yep. people. They had an almost two decade run unchallenged. If anything, y'all were trying to their channels just to tell them that you're not like the black women that they're talking about. So please spare me with your sanctimonious bullshit now. Finally, that you see more black women standing up and her? bucking. Because I can't hear her. Okay. Can uh -oh. you hear me? Now I can hear you. It I can hear her. It was a couple okay. seconds. See, I was, I was going, I see, maybe I was going off too hard, but see, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting tired of this shit because see, this is what I'm talking about. They see more black women that standing up and bucking against this system that these stank ass bitches set in place where they made it socially acceptable to critique and criticize everything about black women here. And you know, you come here talking about a fucking gender war, but if you were silent, while all these niggas was getting rich off dragging black women, and most of y'all were, please do us a favor and keep your cock blower shut now because you represent the worst type of black woman, the type that is two-faced and wants to use this whole it's, go, it's wrong on both sides argument so that you don't appear to be biased. But you said nothing up until now when it was just black women under attack. Y'all have been gaslighting black women like this for generations and it is fucking disgusting because if you really felt that it was wrong you would have checked this shit a long time ago before it got to this point but instead you ignored it and allowed the disrespect toward us to continue while you blamed everything on slavery and white supremacy giving black men a way out so they don't have to take responsibility for anything and a lot of some of you, and a lot of you saying bitches with the most to say have either openly supported black men in the manosphere or were openly mocking black men themselves are now supposed to be the moral authority on what is acceptable behavior. See, it always surprises me how y'all love pretending like you played no part in the same shit that y'all mess ass hoes have profited from the most. Yet you keep trying to scold us about the things that we say when you've never stood in solidarity with another black woman on anything that affects us even in the slightest. Say what you want about us over here, but we say exactly what we think, whether you love it or hate it, and we kept it consistent. And one thing we do agree on is that your community is trash. I said what the fuck I said, and you can quote me on it. Yeah, they didn't get any smoke until, you know, there was an answer or a clap back for, for the Manosphere. Y'all kept trying to barter with them. You really did. And it's fucking disgusting, to be honest with you. OK, and somebody in the comments said this channel is the only divesting channel that she knows of. Listen, there was a lot of people, seriously, y'all, that was using the term divestment and they started backing away from it because black men weren't allowed. I'm just keeping it real with y'all. They used the term divestment until it was made clear that black men were not allowed. And so they started changing their names and that type of stuff going, you know, I'm, I'm backing away from the divestment movement. Back the fuck up. Back the fuck up. I got this. It's, it's cool. And then on top of that, after that disrespectful shit, you keep coming in and out of divestment. One day you're a divester and one day you're not. When, that, when, when shit hits the fan, all of a sudden, well, I'm not a divester. But when it's, you know, looking like something that needs to be done, oh, baby. I'm a divester. I actually started the movement. I was there day one. Y'all bitches are something else. Oh, um, yeah. Janice, are you dusty? Y'all stream yards cutting up on me. So if y'all hear this person, let me yeah, know. No, really. I really appreciate what you're doing. I think it's a, it's a very neat. I can hear her. We okay. hear her. Very neat thing that needs to be done. Um, it, I'm like, not sure. Is this? Like who? And uh, really? Excuse me, you're saying something? Really? You sound weird. Re Ooh, really, dude? You, you sound really <laughs> weird. Okay. Mm. Really, dude? You see what I'm that's, saying? They that's, can't their, that's, 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 that's their preference, y'all. This is the men that they want y'all to stay with. Okay? This. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? This is the men that y'all are getting these BBLs for. This is the men that y'all protesting for. This is the men that other bitches are coming after us for. You think about that for a second. I will not be addressing that nigga. Point blank the fuck period. He was just using his real voice that, that, they, that he goes up that octave while he's bending over touching his toes. So that was actually his real voice. <laughs> what annoys me is that like suddenly every oh, I'm backing away because we're beyond this part 
to divestment. I'm so very sorry to tell you that you may be beyond something, but those motherfuckers that keep dragging us and calling us everything but the child of God and 250,000 bags of bitches are not beyond trying to disparage, disrespect, and de disenfranchise black women like ourselves. So I don't give a fuck about what you think you're so far beyond. I don't give a fuck if these bitches think you're angry. Hell yeah, motherfucking angry. I'm very upset. And then they have the nerve to ask, well, who hurt you? You motherfuckers. You motherfuckers are the reason a lot of us are here today. And then since you hurt me and I couldn't do anything as a child, you're going to feel my wrath as an adult. You're going to get this motherfucking work Monday through Friday, maybe sometimes on Saturday when I'm not getting a good loving on Sunday, I'm resting like the Lord. Fuck all y'all. See, it's, it's a constant blaming everything on us that irritates my fucking soul. Every time a conversation comes up, diversity has got to always be in the center of it. And what they mean is disease panel in particular. We stay in these bitches' mouth in one of these sectors in one way or another. And I'm goddamn sick of it because, again, we have always been a convenient scapegoat for these hoes. When it comes to this gender war bullshit, shit that existed for generations and reached the apex way back in the 60s, it's still interviews from that time period where these black men and women were having these same conversations and these men were saying the same bullshit then that they're saying now yet every time these conversations come up they want to blame us for a gender war or spreading negativity or talking about the community and all this other shit no we divested for a reason which means we don't owe any of you motherfuckers anything not loyalty not compassion not a motherfucking thing get that right that's why I'm always reminding you first and foremost that this is a divestment channel so do not be confused about what sector you have come to okay this is not femininity this is not hypergamy this is not colorism this is not any of that other bullshit now if that's where you want to be go there but don't come here expecting us to talk the way those bitches talk because this ain't that understand that look they it's everybody should already know what it is i don't tolerate black men I don't. All that stuff y'all going through is because of them, okay? And they got these foot soldiers called mammies out here that's taking down some of your favorite content creators, causing destruction and all type of shit. Y'all, I seen a mammy. I shit you not, and I hope you out there listening, whore. You came after all these black women that didn't want to deal with black men, okay? And then when you wanted to prove a point, you brought a white girl up there to lecture at black women. How dare you? Really? How dare you? So to validate it, because you know white people run everything, right? You went on ahead and got your white girl and put her up there. Because you doing that, let everybody know that you know who the fuck is in charge. Same thing another pink bitch did around this motherfucker. Since the white girl said it is it's true. Y'all are crazy. And then you're down at the bottom of the barrel taking each other out. And this is the thing. Tell the truth. Just tell the truth. Tell the truth on these uh th this dating shit. Tell the truth when it comes down to these nakers. Tell the truth when it comes down to this economy. Because these women, they need help. They need help. But you, you're not going to leave your videos up, you know, if you can't be paid for them and that type of stuff, darling. That's why you don't hear them cussing like we do. Because you don't get money when you cuss like that. That's why, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ain't Ladies, it funny, though? I'm sorry, but ain't it funny though that they don't like the preference, but when they can use the preference as a weapon against us, they love her? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. As they always make an exception when you're going to talk shit and try to discourage black women from dating out. Because see, all of a sudden, then that's when Becky's word becomes the law, just like the, when they can use the preferences as cautionary tales and shit like that. It's like, that's why I say a lot of y'all got a lot of fucking growing up to do. You really do. And then you talk shit about us when we have already made it clear that we don't give a fuck what any of you think about us. Let's be clear. We're, you're not going to stop us or shame us out of speaking our truth. I don't care how much you try to attack me personally because really you bitches don't have nothing on me and that's what really bothers you can't out talk me you can't out roast me you can't out petty me so really the only thing you have to say about me is i'm ghetto and country and that shit is fucking old because y'all been saying that shit for almost three years now so i'm gonna need y'all to get some new material for 2024 that's the only thing you bitches got to go at me and what i do when and then when i come back and hand you your ass then that's a problem as well there's a new day, ladies. There's a new day. I seen all of you esoteric bitches and, and weirdos out there talking about this is the age of Aquarius, where things will be revealed. And they damn sure was right about that. 
Okay. All these lies you've been telling black women, it's being revealed. You sending them out there into a fucking den of lions, emaciated lions with some goddamn pork chop panties on. Are, are you, are you okay? Tell these women the truth. At least you could do that since you claim your platform is about black women and girls. And yes, Carol Momoka, that's the motherfucker I'm talking about. How dare you? You, I mean, you talk about somebody having so-called white supremacy. <laughs> to have your pro-black platform have a white woman come over there and lecture black women? <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. Could we taking a bitch who can't even afford a, a Chromebook? Seriously? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, get back to me when you can afford a Chromebook. I would say get back to me when you can afford a, a MacBook, but yeah, how's those donations going? And the kid and part is she's married to a maker, mm -hmm. right? One that's supposed <laughs> to be providing, okay? Can he See, even spell providing? About. Can he spell it? If he can spell it, I'll believe it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. They can't provide a goddamn thing. Yeah, there's a unicorn on your screen. He's a chief of police over there in Nashville. <laughs> He's the chief of police over there in Nashville. Understand the undertones, ladies, right? Over there in Nashville, they have them a black male who is the chief of police, okay? And he tells on himself with the statement he gave. There was a shooting out there in Nashville where some people got shot at. I believe it's cops, but we're going to see, right? And they were looking for someone, a black male, that they were trying to hunt down because this person did that shooting. Well, when the investigation completed, they found out that it was the son of the police chief. Did you hear what I said? It was the son of the unicorn. Let's do this. This is a WSMV4 breaking news alert. Have another breaking news update on that police shooting today in Laverne. Metro Nashville Police Chief John Drake confirms the man accused of shooting two Laverne police officers this afternoon is his estranged son. John Did y'all catch that? That motherfucking nigga made sure that he was telling everybody that he don't fuck with his son. Well, you didn't have to say that because we already know y'all don't fuck with y'all kids. He went on ahead and, and, and he put himself first, put his image first, put his reputation first, even at the sake and the cost of his own goddamn children. Y'all better peep game, okay? I, from what I understand, the saying goes, the apple don't fall far from the tree. But that was the first thing fell out of his mouth, estranged. Yeah, we know y'all are strange from y'all kids. Let's go. John Drake Jr. Drake Jr. is still on the run tonight. Laverne police say license plate readers in Laverne picked up a stolen car at the Dollar General on Stones River Road. Police say two officers approached Drake Jr. Then he pulled out a gun and shot them both. Both of those officers were taken to Vanderbilt and are stable tonight. In a statement, Chief Drake says, I am shocked and deeply saddened to learn that my estranged son, with whom I have very minimal contact with. <laughs> Why does he <laughs> keep reiterating that? <laughs> what? Like, we don't know. He, with whom I have very minimal contact with. Nigga, we know. That's probably why the fuck he turned out like that. Because your ass is like that on some level. You know y'all genetically degenerate. <laughs> he quickly threw his son under the bus. Like, I don't know. I don't like know a this speed bump. Like a motherfucking speed nigga. bump. His ass said, that not on my watch. Ladies, check it. This ain't the only one doing it. We talked about Brian McKnight changing his whole damn name so he can get rid of his junior. They don't like the children that come out of you that are theirs because those children are black. Did you hear me? They don't like your children. They don't like you. I don't know why these women keep giving them goddamn kids. Immediately, in one sentence, he went on ahead and separated himself twice. And I can't get y'all motherfuckers to put yourself first for five minutes. <laughs> Ain't that a goddamn bear? Let's finish. Over the many years, is a suspect in this afternoon's shooting of the two Laverne police officers. My thoughts and prayers are with the two officers. He says, despite my efforts and guidance in the early and teenage years, my son, John Drake Jr., resorted to years of criminal activity and is a convicted felon. He has not been a part of my life for quite some time. <laughs> he now needs to be found and held accountable for his actions today. <laughs> oh, he's he keeps doing it. It's not like it, DZ, but do you see how weird it reads? It's almost like he knows he's guilty. He lied some despite my efforts and guidance in the early and teenage years. My son is a motherfucker. Are you shocked? 
They're literally, why do you, of course not. It, based on how that reads, it tells me you were never in the picture to begin with. You yep. know he wasn't going to be shit. You ain't shit by virtue of his not shitness. Because if you were actually a good father, his ass would probably wouldn't have turned out. Well, he a nigga. He's going to be a criminal either way. But he probably would have would have started later in life with his criminality. But like, dude, he did it three times. Like, I'm no shrink or anything, but that basically tells me he's trying to put as much professional distance between him and his son because to begin with, he never wanted that child. No, Ever. he didn't. He didn't. And they don't want these children that y'all giving them. For God's sakes, ladies, please stop giving these niggas babies. They don't want them. Uh, I'll tell you this, and I'll just keep it tall with you. You keep thinking because this black man is fucking you raw that he wants children with you. It's not true. You want to know why he's fucking you wrong? Because he wants some raw pussy. That's it. That's the fuck all. The Shit. reason that he's giving you that dick is be it raw because he needs either a place to stay, he needs what's in your purse, or he just wanted to see what it felt like. Y'all get it mixed up. Y'all get it very mixed up when some black man is, is wanting to just go ahead and stick it in raw that he cares for you. That's not true. They don't like their children. They know full well because y'all keep telling them to their face. Well, it takes two to make a baby. And you knew if we had sex without protection that it was going to make a baby. He's fully aware of that. He knows that he don't have to take care of nothing coming out your stupid ass either. But you keep doing it. Not to mention these STDs. Pull up. Oh, I was just about to say, hell, in my line of work, they raw dog in them on purpose so they can give them everything that they got. And that's not a good thing because, hell, I had somebody. Oh, they see. That's what I'm trying. That's what we I'm saying. Man, DC had this conversation the other day. Y'all seem determined to learn every fucking thing the hard way when the reality is a lot of these niggas know they are full aware of their status. A lot of them have known for decades at this point, and they're still out sleeping with y'all on purpose. And y'all are under the illusion that they care something about y'all when really at the end of the day they feel no way they don't give a fuck about themselves they didn't protect themselves you think they give a fuck about protecting you and then when we come on here and tell you well protect yourselves all of a sudden the onus for your protection shouldn't be on you like i said y'all these are some delusional ass bitches but they since it's us saying it they're determined to undermine whatever message we put out no matter how helpful or useful it is to black women it's just a simple fact that divestors were specifically disease panel were the ones to actually say it. These niggas are fucking y'all up in the game. And whether y'all want to believe it or not, they're actually fucking doing it on purpose. They got all this shit and they're not telling you. And here I am working with this shit every single fucking day and seeing it every single fucking day and interviewing your niggas behind your back most of the time. You don't even know. You don't even know I talked to the nigga. You don't even know the in information I got out of the nigga. Let's throw it there when I interviewed him. And then you come running your mouth and come to find out a lot of these niggas know they have been and they fucked you anyway. Yep. So they raw dog you for a reason. It happens all the time, ladies. There's so many. Did y'all know that black men like dick too? Uh, your baby daddy. These rappers, hell, it was a rapper that was on his live stream the other day and his uh, little boyfriend or whatever, because he he had his shirt open, right, y'all? I'm, I'm going to show y'all behind the wall. Check it. He had his shirt open and he was doing the sexy thing for the, the mammies that was in his live. His boyfriend didn't know that he was live and these women didn't know that he likes to suck it to the base. Well, the boyfriend came up and was like grabbed him by the neck and was getting ready to kiss him on the cheek. And he like pushed him away. I, 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 don't do that. I'm, uh -uh, I'm live. John, don't do that. I'm live. Ladies, listen, I know it's tough to believe. You got to wrench your brain of all the shit that you learned and look at reality. Okay. And this is not new. They have always liked to suck it to the base. You don't have a base to suck, ma'am, but you do have a couch. You do have th this, this thing where you're going to help him in some way. Huh? And then he give you that anchor baby and it's your baby. It's not his baby. <laughs> he's not acknowledging it. And he's fighting the court system to, to not give you $40 a month. This has been going on for years, y'all. Hell, if you look to the right of my screen, as far as their children go, they burning down houses with their babies in them. I know y'all seen the story. He did, Look, let me just show you a picture of him real quick because the news station didn't show the or at least the one I looked at. They didn't show a picture of him because, again, they're a protected class. But this man right here, he got his ass pissed at his ex-wife, knowing his babies was in the house. 
okay he set that shit on fire the neighbors across the street got him on ring camera walking slow back to his car his kids were all up under the age of 10 and they burned alive alive okay she's on the phone begging somebody to come in and help her yep calling the white man again to come and help you out with some nigga that you gone we went on ahead and gave him your space your coochie your money and your time and stop wasting y'all youth on these men they don't like you okay? yeah they most certainly don't because it wasn't there a basketball player that was recently outed for having a uh extracurricular activity with another uh man in a and a chick with a dick, I guess I can say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Girl. I can't. It's hard to believe because, you know, the um society makes it to where, you know, they're the most masculine. They because they're good at sports. Mm -hmm, a lot of them are. But that's changing as well. If y'all are my husband's a sports fan. If y'all look at what's happening in sports, they're no longer going to be the best at sports, by the way. Anyway, but for right now, they're good at sports, running, jumping, all this extra shit, okay? So they're, they're perceived as the most masculine. They always fighting and shooting and carrying the fuck on. But the fact of the matter is, just because he appears to be a thug, <laughs> and that turns a lot of y'all on, woman, it doesn't mean that he won't go ahead and slurp. Pull up. Okay, those are some of the ones to, to do it the quickest. All that thug shit is just a facade. You want people to think you guys when behind the, the closed doors, you're bending over, biting pillows, and every goddamn thing else, or I'm you're doing you. somebody <laughs> else making it, <laughs> or you're doing somebody else still trying to lie to yourself them, that you still a man. That's what you that's what it is. It's all about them lying to themselves because they don't want to live in their truth and they're running around here trying to make you believe that they're straight men when we're telling you that they're not and you can take that however the fuck you want to i you told cannot... the ladies i told the ladies mm -hmm. behind the wall y'all doing all this stuff to try to make sure they're sexually pleased those of y'all that are pegging and you know saying well he liked that it doesn't mean that he's da -da -da -da. doesn't mean he's part of the roy g biv community i'm gonna tell you like this and you come back and tell me in secret if it happened to you those of y'all that are into pegging, it's only a matter of time before he gonna want the real deal. Your plastic shit is not going to work, but for so long. You understand me on that. You need to side eye some of that shit they asking y'all to do. Y'all sucking toes, eating asses and all that. It's not going to work. Listen, most and just because men, they get... Go ahead, Aaliyah. Now, I just I said most straight men don't really are not with, with any type of ass play for real. It's Girl, exit only. Right. They don't want you even nowhere near the hole talking about you. Go, they don't we, even we, play we, like we, that. We, we finna go there. We finna go and there. And I'm always <laughs> cautious with a man that want me to do too much surrounding his ass. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, if you Aaliyah, do, Aaliyah, you know when your, okay. engine, when your engine get cranking, the okay. shit get kind of, you know, it get real. Aaliyah real as fuck shit. Mr. Okay. Rowe real as fuck too. Okay. You know, I'm just I'm I have to avoid men like that, like the play. That's all I'm saying because it ain't. I'm telling y'all, like, it's not right. That's not the way shit's supposed to be. So some ain't some ain't right about that. Use your gut, trust your gut, use your instinct. I'm telling you, if he enjoy that shit too much, you better run for the hills. Go ahead, Mrs. Rose. Stay away from them, right? Don't even look for signs. If it's a black dude, run. Okay, right. there, there's the red flag right there. You see them and you get the fuck on speed walk. Okay, get your BBL to jiggling back to your damn car. <laughs> Not BBL, <laughs> Lord, I was just gonna say that nigga spend more time on his knees than anybody else, but he most certainly ain't praying with his demonic ass. Do with that what you will. Check it, ladies. Y'all have been too available. Okay, it's almost like they don't see you. When you're twerking, when you're bending over, when you're half naked and none of this shit. And I am very embarrassed for this girl. I'm getting ready to show y'all. I'm very embarrassed. Y'all stop being thirsty for these niggas. They know that you're there. They know that you're going to be there no matter how much shit you talk. Because they they y'all let them get away with everything. They, they got so much ass from y'all without building for y'all. I'm of the opinion that it cannot be undone. It's getting to the point where you're whining your, your coochie around, right? Whining your coochie around this bitch, and they don't even see you. So, ladies, let me set it up. Over there at the little event Usher was having, it was a woman in the crowd when Usher came off of the stage. She thought that he was headed for her, 
So what she did was she started wiggling and jiggling and whining around in a sexual manner. She put her right arm in the air. And you know how somebody look when they ride in a horse. So they hand like goes around in a circle. I mean, she was getting it. Y'all watch this embarrassing shit because he didn't even acknowledge her. And he looked at her twice. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, Yo, man. Big bro. Much love to you, dog. Yo, not many people know I got a few big brothers, and this is one of them. This is one, it was you and Brian Reed. It was the first two people that I knew in this industry. You always welcome me with open arms, right? You always be honest with me. One thousand percent. Yes. Absolutely. I mean, considering the fact that I'm just really enjoying myself out here, I know I ain't supposed to be off the stage. How embarrassing. How embarrassing. Have some fucking self-dignity. I mean, as soon as he started walking that way, she dropped straight to her fucking knees and started wiggling. And he didn't even acknowledge her. You're talking about somebody that goes and get colonics. Do you hear me? Usher goes and gets colonics on a regular basis. You do with that what the fuck you will. Okay? Huh? I thought the shit was hilarious. I, I, I mean, I'm sitting up there looking at that shit and covering one of my eyes, but I can't stop watching the train wreck. Y'all stay wiggling for these niggas, and it's almost as if they don't even see y'all anymore. Have some dignity, divest, and walk away. Do better for yourself. Better yourself. You deserve better, God damn it. Anybody got anything before I run to Discord so we can spill this speculation tea about what's going on on these YouTube streets? Oh, child, that was embarrassing, but y'all have a good rest of y'all week. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I love y'all to the moon. Oh, and yeah. I got one more thing to say. If you feel the way about anything that was said here tonight, get the fuck over it. We meant everything that was said up here. No apologies Damn. or fucks given. Okay? Absolutely. Right. I post on that shit and let what you heard here tonight sink in. Cut off all your shit when you get a minute and see if it makes sense what was said up here. And then holler at me. Don't, don't holler at me while you're in your feelings. When you figure out what was said and if it makes sense, let me know. Y'all know where to find me. See y'all later. Bye. Bye. Oh, shit. This other laptop finna die like a motherfucker. Where's my plug? Blinking and everything. I'm coming. Thank you.